Hello, and today we'll be looking at the Eldark Tiny GT7. But before we get into it, a quick reminder to please like or dislike this video if you didn't like it, comment down below, subscribe, click on the bell icon to uh, hear when I upload stuff, and do something today that scares you, because at least most of those will really help me out. But anyway, back to what we were talking about, this little Eldark thing. Now, FPV and quads kind of run in trend, and the trend right now, aside from being whoop style quads in general because it's winter, is 2S. Just recently I looked at the very excellent Mobula 7, and one of the key features this had was a tiltable camera um, so you could go fast or you know go slower, and with a bit of tinkering you could change it over to use 1S instead of these uh, two, two 1S batteries in, in series, which will bring you 2S. So, there are some differences in this one. Let's have a look at it. It's from Eldark and it still calls itself King Kong as well, so they haven't really quite uh, gone over there. It seemed really nicely uh, put together in terms of the styling, so I was very keen to check it out. And as with all the Eldark stuff, comes on the nice plastic lunchbox. Really great if you're ever chucking these in the car. Um, it feels a bit big just in general for, for carrying it around, but um, good for protecting it. And this is what the quad looks like. It is, again, 75mm, so very similar to the Mobula. But there are a few key differences I picked up on just looking at it, because when I looked at it, I thought, oh, those props look a bit different. There are, of course, three-bladed instead of four-bladed. Um, and the motor KV is quite different as well. 1600 KV on the Mobula 7 and 9,000 kV on the GT7. Although, again, the motors are slightly different. This is an 0803 motor. These were 0802 motors, so slightly bigger motor. So, aside from being three-bladed props, these are described on the spec as uh, 1535s, which makes them, I think, 30-something mil uh, diameter? Yes, diameter, where these are 40 mil. So clearly bigger, and obviously you can get more power out of them because they're four-bladed. So what this seems to be telling me, I think, looking at large motors, running smaller props in a, a smaller KV, is they've sort of made this more friendly for indoors, where they gave this a lot of raw power, so you can really fresh it out outdoors. That's what I'm thinking anyway. I haven't, I haven't flown it or looked at it yet, but that's my sort of point of view. Camera looks fairly flat. They said it was 10 degrees, not adjustable. Uh, it's got a nice protective thing there, and it's just got this single spot for the battery. So the included battery is this 2S uh, 380 mAh battery which which will slot into there like so. Quite a tight fit. Um, and it, weirdly it has a little balance plug connector on it um, for use. Obviously then you can't go to a 1S so again yeah it'd be interesting to see how this copes indoors. I mean there's there's things we can do if it's got too much power to reduce that through beta flight, um, but it seems to me like they've 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 made this for indoors. Looking at the, the changes in spec, but anyway, let's see what else we get in the box. We have a bag of bits, and in the bag of bits uh, we have this cable. You will see that it is a balance lead connector, which will connect to that and split to uh, a balance connector and a JST. I'm guessing, and I haven't read the instructions yet, this is going to be for charging because you will often find chargers need both connections else they will report a connection break. I'll double check that in the, the manual. There's the uh, instructions, that's the Chinese side, about the receiver. This comes with an AC900. Uh, it, it's a dual mode receiver so it will work on both Futaba uh, SF, HSS and FreeSky D16 uh, in no telemetry mode. We have two spare sets of props, some spare screws for different things because there's M2x4s and M2x6s. Uh, a USB cable, I noticed this has a specifically thin end, which I suspected would be for going into one of these gaps, but just looking I cannot see where the USB connector is at all. But fortunately the last thing in the box is the manual where I will be looking and finding out uh, exactly where I do connect the USB lead to and where I bind it. A couple of other interesting things in this. I'm uh, sort of traditionally the, the King Kong Eldark style have come without uh, OSDs. This one says it's got one but it doesn't look like your traditional Betaflight LED just looking at um, what was 
on the spec there they they call it smart OSD I don't know if it's part of like the camera or something we'll find out in a second um, yeah so let's uh, well I'll, I'll have a read of the instructions and then we'll find out what to do next jump cut okay so now I've read the manual and understand how it works this button at the top here which I thought was just going to be for VTX changing channel is actually quite important what you can do with it is holding it down when powering it on and having your radio and bind will set it to bind mode. Also holding it down for a period when turning it on puts the OSD setup on. We'll cover this in a second. Um, and then finally when it's on normally and you press it, it goes through the various VTX channels. It's not a traditional band and frequency. It's got a bunch of set frequencies and every time you press it, the little LED changes and different uh, flash patterns to indicate where it is. The other thing is I was so used to looking here and here for a USB setup the only place I didn't look is here. The least obvious uh, USB connection I've ever seen but as you see the connector just goes in like that so that's that's easily sorted. So here's a very quick tour of Betaflight um, and it's quick because there wasn't much to do. It's running uh, 341 so obviously the port's already set up with uh, serial RX there on your 2 and obviously with S bus set up for the receiver. Um, now I just changed a couple of things. I added motor stop because that was off and I didn't want the motor spinning to 4K 4K loop and the other thing that they had on which I didn't want was uh, air mode. They had that permanently on so I turned that off. Bit tuning wise pretty much looked kind of default. Uh, I can't remember if this is default now but the super rate was on 0 0.70 so I've changed that to 0.8 Obviously I just sorted out the sub trims on my receiver and the only other thing I changed were the modes. They just had it in uh, arm and angle so I've added uh, angle horizon. I've I've put beeper in because that's standard. It doesn't actually have a beeper so if you want a beeper you'll need to do the D-Shot command type beeper. Um, air mode on a switch and I've added flip over after crash because you, know, you, you end up upside down quite a lot. Um, on these little ones. You will notice by looking at the configuration that it does not have an OSD. Um, as, as I thought it doesn't use a Betaflight OSD, it uses something else but let's look at that next. So holding down that button on power on for a while give you this menu and you can kind of see the OSD layout. So what we've got there we select the type of battery and I'm guessing basically this works as a voltage divider so if we say it's 2s it divides the voltage in two so we can see what our cell voltage is there at the start. The next one down here which I'm just changing uh, changes the alarm set between 3.3 and 3.6 volts so I've gone 3.3 on this one. The next one down is a kind of uh, an, a sort of line indicator or some sort of central point indicator which was on by default. I actually turned it off later um, once I understood what that was next one down is the type of camera it's set to A which is auto um, but you can also set it explicitly to PAL or NTSC uh, auto works and it's actually an NTSC camera the uh, next one down the little clock symbol as you might guess is the whether the time is on again because this doesn't seem to have anything to do with beta flight this is just a power on timer it's not an arm timer which is not quite as useful obviously um, and finally the very last thing uh, lets you change the display name down there which was set to LDARK uh, initially which I've changed to Curry K for no reason uh, as to remind myself who I am but that's it there's no other things you can do obviously you can turn all these things off and you have some vague setup of them but there's not a lot else you can really do and to come out of it you actually have to wait for that little timer to go all the way down. Every time you touch the button it goes back again. And that was my initial setup. You can see I've got that sort of central thing that I didn't want. And apologies for filming this on my desk. I wasn't really intending to do it. I was just messing around with it so I should have kept the lens cap on. Okay well here we are in the lounge and here's the little GT7 ready to test. Figured we'd do a quick line of sight flight just around the lounge here. Um, then try FPV. All indoors at the moment because the outside weather is just horrendous and this is kind of I guess what it's mostly for looking at the angle looking at the sort of props and motor so um yeah let's give it a go quite noisy
takes quite a bit of throttle to get going. Seems to do the job, doesn't it? I'm going to um, get the goggles on, try some FPV. Well, here's the FP Maiden flight, and as you can see, we've got a bit of a, a bit of a weird situation going on. I mean, it was flying absolutely fine, and as expected, it was really easy to control on 2S. It hasn't got the, the raw power there. But obviously, you know, this, this is a less than perfect situation. Seems to clear up when we're very close, but it doesn't hold up very well at any sort of, you know, distance beyond about a foot. So um, I decided to double check if I had the right channel going on here. So if you look at this LED sequence here, it looks to me like it's flashing green-blue, which according to the book, here is 5740 or F1. According to my goggles, it's coming in at 5866, which is blue-green. So it seems to me that the order is around the wrong way. So I'm going to try changing this to blue-green and see if I get 5740. Okay, so after messing around with that VTX, what I really discovered, aside from the fact that I couldn't trust the lights to tell me what was going on, is that it didn't seem to like at least F1 or generally the, the F band too much. So yeah, I stayed on that 5866 and uh, that way my image was absolutely fine. As you can see, there's a vast improvement over what we had before. So, and I'm just restarting that uh, initial maiden which is why the timer looked a little bit crazy because it sort of stayed plugged in all that time and I'm just doing a sort of normal round the house flying um, and plenty of crashing and, and bumping into stuff I'm doing a bit of a mix here of and I can't tell which is which because of course I haven't got the right type of OSD I'm doing a mix of horizon and angle flying um, obviously if I'm doing any flips or rolls I'm in horizon otherwise it's generally angle and as I said this thing looks like it's been built for indoors it doesn't have that much power because of those lower KV motors and the smaller props so I mean it's still got power when you punch it but it's not 2s on a on the modular 7 is really hard indoors there's like there's too much going on on this thing it's like it's no problem um, it's it's easy to handle so but that reduced power I've just flipped it over here to check uh, how turtle mode works um, and aside from me forgetting which switch is which you can tell it doesn't have as much power I mean obviously the the props working in the wrong direction so that's an issue anyway but on a normal quad it's just a case of a quick punch of that throttle to flip it on this one um, if you got it like on the hard floor it would sort of skid about a while instead of actually flipping over because that it just didn't have that that punch that you'd normally have however for flying indoors it's really good it's really easy to actually zoom along and and do whatever you like and you're getting a decent few minutes because you've got that extra 2s power it, it tends to not be quite as voltage saggy as using a, a 1s so perhaps that's the reason they went for that. But yeah, we're having absolutely no issues flying around and bumping into stuff and, uh, you know, keeping it nicely together. And if it does go over, uh, yeah, I mean, turtle mode's not great on it, but it, it does work. You can flick it back again. And yeah, this 75mm is a little bit bigger than the traditional 65 or 68mm tiny whoop, but um, I could squeeze it through little gaps, no problem. So I did actually have a couple of spare batteries for this. I had a couple of uh, little Rhino batteries, which are 360 milliamps. Um, so I decided to use those as, as some spares. They kind of squeezed in. You see the battery alarm going off there, indicating it's it's got low. After I recharged the batteries, we actually had a slight weather window when it actually wasn't raining for a while. So it allowed me just to open the door and take it in and out of the garden. Um, and it was pretty damn quick actually when you when you go for it outside I mean this is the context of a small garden feeling quick you put it in a large field it's not going to feel quick but um, again it wasn't it wasn't a windless day despite its size despite its apparent lack of power it still had 
plenty going on to you know fulfill its need as a sort of inside outside quad the vtx seemed to be struggling though i have to say it was was not particularly nice but of course we've got a wall in the way and stuff but again this is the absolute sort of perfect thing for this quad i think um i wouldn't say i'd ever want to fly it purely outside even in a restricted area because it's it lacks that real power but if you're going in and out of your garden into your house and stuff like that and sliding along the floor for no reason um, it's it's a good little fun quad i think it handles quite nicely and you can you know you can get some decent speed up if you want to one thing you will notice here and this is uh, another fresh battery which is just charged and so i know was at 4.2 is this voltage reading is reading under by about uh, 0.1 of a volt um, and this is a little bit of a problem because there's nothing you can do to tune this. There's nothing in this OSD thing that says, yep, yeah, if, if it's reading wrong, you can do this. So you kind of have to just think about it. So this is where, you know, obviously the Betaflight OSD comes in and is a lot better. So it's a nice little quad. It flies nicely indoors. You can do a lot of stuff with it. I actually find using this 2S battery as opposed to something like the Mobula with its uh, batteries and series a lot easier. That's all the good news. Now, there's certain things about it I don't like. Um, and some of it's to do with the compromise. In order to get it tuned for indoors, they've reduced the KV of the motors, they've reduced the size of the props. So it's almost like we're putting a lot more power through it to get the sort of response you might get from a 1S of a similar size, um, which kind of feels a bit weird. Uh, I mean, it achieves its goal and you get a decent flight time out of it, about four-ish minutes. Um, and you can rattle along indoors because indoors, this is gonna go as fast as you need it to unless you've got a, a huge space. So there's that really going for it. That's good stuff. I don't like the fact that it's OSD isn't a beta flight OSD. The, um, and the fact that I can't change certain things on it, like the battery voltage not being right. The, the main problem with this quad is the Mobula 7 came out just a little while beforehand, um, and this does most things a lot better. You've got the movable camera angle, you've got the Betaflight OSD, you've got a lot more power there when you want it. Um, and there's only, you know, I don't like the batteries, you, you'd have to tune it around to to make it better for indoors so you know yeah it's pretty good it's not this one and i mean as far as a recommendation goes for a 2s swoop i still have to say this one reigned highly supreme it's good though it's just it's just not as good if you want a purely indoors thing which is uh easier to fly without any modifications this might be for you uh for everybody else still buy this one and uh, take a look back at my original review if you want to but for now, we have to say thanks to Banggood for supplying this for review. And of course, there are links down below if you want to check it out further. I hope that's been helpful and I will catch you in the next video. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video. So thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.